concept of money management. So I've devised this um, presentation for you um, to go through some of the key principles of money management and um, to discuss different areas that I think will help you. Um, initially, uh, we'll be discussing the principles of money management, why it's important, um, leading into how it can help with risk mitigation. And I believe with my um, expertise that these two um, will help you sort of alleviate any anxieties with trading with emotions. We want to get rid of those emotions. So um, working in the industry, I've, um, I've been exposed to many different clients um, and many different misunderstandings about the industry as a whole. I mean, there's uh, many different reasons, there's many different dreams, there's many different um, priorities with every single trader I speak to. And um, I'm subjected to a lot of different um, opinions, uh, a lot of different uh, expertise, lack of expertise, and just knowledge in general. And um, many, many of the traders I have spoken to have um, uh, got into to trading through uh, the crypto boom. They've managed to follow this. They've seen quick money into the industry. And um, as a result, uh, they've taken up the plunge and gone into trading. But obviously, there is risk. So here's a warning here just to make you aware that, you know, the CFDs are complex instruments and they come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 77% of retail traders' accounts lose money when trading CFDs. Um, but uh, yeah. What I intend to do is actually help with that. Um, but my point is this, when I've been working in the industry, I've been um, subjected to a lot of different um, reasons people have come into trading. And a lot of people get their knowledge through um, YouTube, through Instagram, whatever it is, whatever social media platform it is. And um, they've basically seen some guy with six or seven monitors um, about to go to the beach telling you that you can do trades of $100 and you can turn it into 50 grand into six simple steps. And it's um, it's, it's making some pretty wild claims and it's, it's misrepresenting the core understanding of trading. Um, you know, people are being grossly misinformed of this information. And it's something I call it called delusions of grandeur. Trading is um, easy, but only to those who've taken... Um, seriously, the level of commitment that's attributed to becoming a professional trader. So what I would like to do is actually teach you about these um, core principles, these different um, attributes of risk mitigation, your money management, and how I genuinely believe these two will um, eliminate these emotions that we're we're all victim to. You're, you're only human at the end of the day. We all want to make money. We don't want to lose money. And we all are afflicted by um, normal, normal emotions. So I'm going to try to teach you about these things. Because um, like I said, it's you uh, and your emotions that will be the biggest problem, the biggest uphill struggle you'll face. Uh, you want to be successful. Whatever reason you've come into trading, whether or not it's to get the house, pay off a, a college a tuition for kids, whatever the reasons are, there is something at stake um, that you want. So this can have an adverse effect on your priorities, on how you trade, uh, and particularly your emotions. So you and your emotions are the most difficult thing to um, control, to um, cull, if you like, with discipline. But again, how do you how do you combat this? What what methods can you use? What tactics can you employ in order to um, rectify these problems that you're going to face, that everyone's going to face as a trader? Um, I would honestly say, firstly, you need to understand and have a good, healthy trading perspective. You know, you need to establish how did I get this money? What kind of hoops did I jump through to get this this capital? How many hours of work did I work? What did I sell to get this? You know, you need to understand the, the where this money has come from will help you um, uh, establish just the importance of this money. Okay, because I actually at the end of this want to be able to teach you to trade defensively as opposed to aggressively, which is what many traders do when they are a novice when they're first into the platform. 
Um, you know, a more extensive and, and comprehensive analysis can lead into assessing your appetite to risk and your trade with less stress. This is very key, but it's very hard to understand initially. So this is why, you know, IQ Auction has demo accounts. This is why we have a team of support agents. This is why we have account managers, a plethora of material um, that we can send you to help out with you. You know, there's many different ways that we can sort of help you. And this is why we've decided to do webinars as well. It's a more interactive approach to your learning and development as a trader. So the biggest way to um, eliminate your emotions, to um, have healthy money management and to understand risk mitigation is simply put analysis and cold, hard mathematics. Um, numbers are very cold. They are up and down. They are cool or put higher or lower, um, red or blue, what way is the candle going, these kind of things. They don't have emotions. Um, hey to all the new people, by the way, welcome. Um, so I've just been talking about the key principles of money management. I've been talking about risk mitigation and uh, my agenda for today's live webinar. I want to keep on um, teaching you about all of these different um, attributes. So today's topic is money management. We are talking about uh, healthy uh, risk mitigation through money management and then that leading into um, trading without emotions. So for those, all those new people that have just joined, brilliant. Uh, so I was up to cold, hard mathematics and analysis. This is, this is a, a very, very fundamental tactic you need to employ in order to become a fervently well-trained trader in, in today's world. There is many different um, temptations out there with trading, and this is how you need to cull them by cold and hard maths. So you might have heard this saying, and it's not just a silly saying, but it's, uh, it's nothing personal, it's just business. But this is because this is how people do business. They leave their emotions at the front door and they use the numbers and the statistics in front of them. And um, this is why this is said. So this is the kind of thing I wanna put into your head. You know, um, like I said, you, you have a reason why you want to become a trader. You've all got this dream, this goal, this end product you would like to achieve. But this can have an effect on how you trade. This can have an effect on decision making, how much capital you put in. You can become a lot less fruitful, uh, a lot more fruitful, should I say, with uh, some of the trades you may make. So what I would like to do is just go through all these different topics. And firstly, let's get to the point. Risk is going to be here all the time. You cannot have an opportunity without a risk. And without the, the risk, there's not going to be opportunity because the, the volatility is essentially what you need as a trader. You need that in order to make any kind of profit, any kind of um, return at all, because without that risk, you're not going to have a reward. There's no point. If, the, if there was no volatility, there's no market to trade on. You'll just there's no pulse, there's nothing to use. Is this gonna go up? Is it gonna go down? No, so you need that risk. So it's always going to be a um, main part of trading, okay? You need to be comfortable with it. You need to understand that you are going to be exposed to this, okay? So you need to be sensible with it. You need to be vigilant and you need to be mature that this is gonna bite you sometimes. There are going to be losses. I hate to say that, but every trader will tell you this in the industry. You need to prepare for these. You're not going to win 100%. No one in the industry has, and no one in the industry will. Um, you speak to any professional, any person at any level of this industry, and they will tell you they've lost, they've learned, and they remember these losses. Um, but we're here to actually instruct you about these losses that have been sustained by other traders. And um, this is why we're giving you the education now. So moving on from this, um, with that risk then, how do you, as a trader, identify an opportunity? Or indeed when, which is one of my questions I ask usually with this, because yes, you can establish a trade, you can go on binary, you can uh, do a put option or a short, whatever you wanna do, you can place a position, but, but why? Why have you done this? Have you just opened up the platform? Have you just uh, logged on and heard about some little bit of news here and there and just clicked on, why have you done this? You need to understand these different principles of identifying an opportunity. But my question is why and when to start looking for more 
as well. And we will touch on this subject later on. I'll summarize what my points are alluding to. OK, now I use this metaphor of a lot of my traders and uh, forgive the simplicity, but the, the, the principles are that um, I want you to kind of imagine yourself as a pilot when you're trading, essentially, you know, you you are the pilot, your platform that you are using to trade on is your cockpit and the money you're using is your fuel. You know, you need to, just like any pilot, need to establish how much fuel you have, how far I can go, and where am I landing. More importantly, what asset am I trading, how much can I invest, and how long can I be inside that trade. That's basic trading right there. But these things, you need pre-flight checks if you're a pilot, don't you? You need to know if everything's working, if there's a storm ahead, if you're going to experience turbulence, if you have enough fuel to get to that journey. Well, it's the same thing in trading. You're not going to get into a plane that you don't know where you're landing. You might run out of fuel. And this is the same thing with capital and trading. So you need to understand where is that volatility coming from that you're going to be using to trade. Um, you need to understand where um, you need to understand where the, the opportunity is going to be, but also understand the risks that are available to it, okay? So doing your technical analysis is like a pre-flight check. You also need to um, know about your, so your technical and your fundamental analysis. So that's where the volatility is. Once you've done that, you've assessed there's an opportunity, okay? You understand that's where I might have uh, an opportunity to place a trade, but then you need to assess the risk involved. Um, you know, what, what's, what are people saying about this? How do people feel about this? Is there any forecasts like you may have seen on the market analysis tab on our platform? Um, earnings, they have forecasts that you have inflation rates that, that are forecast as well for your Forex um, and earnings for your stocks. These are, these are checks you need to do. So once you know where to land, you need to assess, do you have enough fuel? Do you have enough money? Can I afford to lose this? And this is when you can take flight. Because I'm telling you now, you would not feel comfortable in a plane that didn't do any of these checks, that didn't know about the fuel and didn't know where they're landing. So this is the same things you need to remember. Do your checks, which is your technical analysis. Know the whereabouts the location of where that volatility is. I silly put volatility island here, but it's you get the point. It's fundamental analysis. Reading the news is where it's going to happen. And by doing these things, you're in the right place at the right time and you're aware of the risks and the opportunity it's a balance of both so you need to be in the right place at the right time but i mentioned before as well the trading perspective and the trading perspective um allures to risk adjusted returns which is uh, something i want to talk about as well um with the end goal of discussing portfolio management um right here i've used two very simple examples you can you can work out to yourself you know you've done your self analysis financially you've worked out okay i've got a thousand dollars i can put up front this month for capital i can afford to lose this i'm not going to be out of pocket i'm not going to be missing rent payments whatever it is this is money i am exposing to the risk of losing my money so there's two options here or loosely speaking there's two options and you've got a hundred dollars on a single trade which will give you 10 opportunities okay that's good 10 trades, 100, you may win, you may lose. Or you've got $10 in a single trade and you can have 100 opportunities. But it doesn't mean you just need to work like that. It's about being agile and about being um, dynamic with the time. And it's about embracing um, and facing the pace involved with everything. So these risk-adjusted returns, um, if something is has a more of an opportunity than it does a risk, you may want to put more capital in. And if it is too risky, but you you know the market well enough, you, you're quite comfortable with, say, Euro USD, you might want to stick to just the $10 trades and things like that. It's about being dynamic at the time um, of the trade as well. Because I can tell you now, if you establish a mediocre trade, you will yield a mediocre result. It's one of those things. You need to have these disciplines involved, okay? Because if you don't have some sort of structure or some sort of um, plan in order, so for example, I've talked about these trading perspectives. 
um, you you need to have some kind of rules or discipline. So you've done your self financial analysis. You've got a thousand to, to, to put at risk. Um, also, you've realised the risk involved, and then you can understand um, the the places where you want to land that money, where you want to place your trade. So self-analysis, fundamental analysis and technical, and these will lead into discipline because you know what you've got, where you're going and what to expect. And knowing that is um, a very, very uh, difficult thing to, to have if you don't do any of these sort of things. So how much can I afford to put into a stake? Um, have I employed a diverse and adaptive analysis when considering what amounts to allocate per trade? And the discipline is sticking to this analysis. Um, of both the markets and yourself and you do not let the emotions come into play so you are sticking to your guns as it were you are sticking to what you believe and not letting that uh, affect your trade so to put it lightly you can have rules um you can have one to five rules is it this yes okay tick it does it meet this factor does it do this there's many different ways you can do it in stocks you can have um, the sharp ratio with standard deviation and expected returns with uh, forex you can check the um the results of every single day and see how much the it's gone up and how much it's gone down to see how volatile it is there's many different ways you can understand that um but it's quite difficult to keep that in check if you don't have a place where it's all kind of kept OK, it's very, very difficult to um, assess the risk, do the risk mitigation and have discipline. If you've got nowhere that you can. Um, you can amend all of this data, you can check it and amend it. So this is why I'm leading on to diversification of a portfolio by the end of this, because your goal should not necessarily be to, to make money only. It should also be to protect your money, because this will help you have more of a a lifetime as a trader because you'll be able to push forward into the future as opposed to wasting all of your capital okay so it's, um yeah so uh the diversification of the portfolio and the management the the main reasons for this uh is the main reason i've explained all this situation here is is because of this you've got one asset one period it's it's a limited opportunity i speak to many different traders who only trade one particular thing they only trade one particular time and, and um this is sticking this is basically standing on thin ice with your feet together you're not spreading a risk you're not um having different options about you're sticking to one time period one asset okay so you need to have a good knowledge base before hunting for this volatility so this is why education is very, very, very important when you're stepping into trading. But the portfolio management, why, why I'm mentioning it, it's having a systemic long and short portfolio management across multiple asset classes, meaning if a Forex market is flat that day and you only trade Forex, well, you're not going to make those capitals you expected to make inside anything. You know, you need to be adaptive. You need to go to maybe binary or maybe there's tension in the Middle East or something like that, and it's affecting oil. So you also need to um, you also need to uh, yeah, you also need to mention um, there might be volatility in Bitcoin in cryptocurrency. There also might be some volatility in um, oil. Like I said, the tensions in the Middle East. So all these different factors come into play. So it's knowing where to go at the right time and being adaptive, being agile. Um, okay so what this will do um if you are able to establish a a healthy portfolio by understanding where um where sort of opportunities are and where the risks may be um, you're able to sort of have a healthy and vigilant portfolio that will yield consistency and returns because that's what your end goal is you want a portfolio of long and short uh, positions across multiple asset classes it's simple as that um, because you need to treat uh, your portfolio like a manager would treat his football team you need to treat the assets you're using like players um, you know if, uh, if an asset is not performing well if a player is not performing well the manager is going to substitute that player or 
you as a manager of your portfolio need to substitute that um, asset, okay? So you have a healthier portfolio throughout, a better performing team. And this is what you need to do. So we've talked about money management, understanding self-analysis, understanding um, what financial capital you can put in there, then seeing what risk you can expose yourself to, and then trying to discipline yourself with um, alleviating the anxieties that you have with emotions so letting these dictate how you trade. This is why I've been thinking of putting this in here, just to make you aware of the uh, portfolio management tool we have on the platform, because from here, you're able to assess all of your trades at the time. Um, you can also um, check the, the current profit or monetary or percentile profits at that time. So if you are on a longer position on something that you need to keep positions open over the weekend, you may want to make some money in other assets in order to keep those positions open overnight. So you can do, do that through clever portfolio management. You don't necessarily need to um, you don't necessarily need to um, put more capital in there, okay? You don't need to, um, yeah, just keep investing more and more money. You can actually make the money that you need to pay and keep these positions open through healthy portfolio management. But um, I'm going to take a few questions at the moment, and um, we'll just have a little look. Right, so um, so far on the topics I've mentioned about risk mitigation and money management and uh, your emotions, what what kind of um, questions do you have on these subjects, if I can be here to help? Um, and also I've seen that some of you have um, mentioned an issue of not seeing the screen. Are, are, is everything okay? It should be on the total portfolio complete control. I'd recommend if you cannot see me, um, using the strong internet connection and making sure all your updates are installed as well because everybody else is seeming to have a, a decent connection. So I can wait for you to, to try and do that. Um, and also don't forget if you miss any of this, a recording will be put after this uh, live webinar. Okay. Right. Well, the percentage of your balance, um, Andres Hernandez Fernandez, we will address that one there. What percentage of my capital is good to invest? Well, I can tell you now that um, three percent of your total capital is considered as an aggressive investment. Three percent. So if you have a thousand, that's thirty dollars. If you have a hundred, that's just three. It seems very small, but uh, professionals will call that aggressive. Okay. They will call that very, very aggressive as well. Um, and the money management um, formulas, you can do something like compound uh, trading as well. You can be very, very vigilant with stuff like that. And um, it's one of those sort of things you need to stick with. I do have um, a other webinar I can address to you actually from a colleague of mine who's addressed this as well through money management, different structures of it. Um, and in terms of analysis, you've mentioned that speaking with maths, what would you recommend? Well, it's, it's tough to say because there's many different ways you can do it. I mean, if you look at my uh, portfolio management here, we'll go over to this. This is what I've alluded to because with portfolio management and um, portfolio management, you're going to have good and bad assets. But are you going to try the same strategy over and over and over again? Well, no, you're not. But how do you sort of trust what strategy is working? Are you just going to do that by day's trading and think, oh, that was a good day? Probably not. It's probably not going to work for you. So what you actually need to do is, is keep on top of it. So this is why I've put this in here, this downloading your trading history into an Excel file, a spreadsheet. You can do it from the personal cabinet. We can all teach you how to do it. Um, you go to the personal cabinet, you click on trading history, and uh, you're you can look at yeah, every single instrument that you're using, every class set type, and then download the results of what you've got in a set period of time. But you can you can keep this in a spreadsheet, okay? And you can name, okay, this is this strategy on this asset class on this period of time of trading. And you're able to then work out which one is working well for you. Um, you're able to um, understand, okay, well, this is not really working. I've not made what I wanted to. I wanted to make a 10% return. I've only been making about seven. It's not healthy. 
but maybe some attributes of this tactic will be useful to you. So it's about being clever and dynamic with that, but keeping records of how you're performing. So if you have a portfolio management tool inside the platform where you can keep on top of your assets and see which stocks are doing well and overall, or click on it to show all and you'll see uh, overall stocks. I mean, what I mean by this, um, if we go back a few slides, let's have a look right here. So what I'm saying is here, portfolio management, I don't know if you can see it here, but you've got five stocks here. I can go show more or seven, show more, four. Well, look, Royal Bank of Scotland's not doing very well. Out of those ones, I'm probably going to have a little look at those and see what I can do with it. It's only minus $10. Not much of a thing, but I can sort of still amend that um, as a percentage because right now um, I've got 4% on profit. It's not meeting my target of five, but it's just about close and it's a collective thing. So from here, I can address each of these assets and change them. I can do single closes and close each one because in each one of those, I can tell you now I've got different leverage, different amounts at different times as well. So some of them may need to be closed because it's like a garden. You've got to dig it a few times and get rid of the weeds, you know. Okay, let's have another few questions as well. So indicators and strategies to learn first, any tip for strong trading? Um, okay, so indicators for strong trading. There's no right and wrong way to, to trade with, with, with strategies. I mean, you need to have a harmony of both, but it depends on the asset class you're trading. For me, as a, um, a trader, I like to use my news when it comes to commodities. You know, I'll have my support and resistance used. I'll look at uh, what the people are saying as well. And um, this kind of helps me fight the emotional trading because I simply just have to Google the word oil. I'll look in the news. WTI and Brent are mentioned in this. OPEC, um, the people who are in charge of actually uh, counting the oil to power the barrels of oil and pricing them and talking about the distribution, this will affect the supply and demand. So from this, I'm able to assess, is this likely to go down? Because usually what you'll find is companies like um, OPEC will have a desired price on oil. I can tell you last year, they were happy with around $70 a barrel. Um, they were both trading uh, WTI and Brent at around 56 to 62, uh, respectively, um, but they wanted it at 70. So I knew at the back of my head that this needs to go up. They're going to do everything they can to get these two dot barrels um, up to about $70 each. So I then employed my technical indicators. Um, it doesn't matter which ones you use. Just use the ones you are comfortable with. I mean, some people start off with the RSI, the Bollinger Bands and things like that. I quite like the KDJ because it's a, single in, um, it's a signal indicator in times of high volatility. But the point is this. You need to work on them. So if you work on your strategies, um, if you use this to download your trading history, if you are able to utilize the, the, the um, utilities we've got, you know, if you actually manage to use these successfully. So what I mean by this, you're looking at your portfolio. You're looking at your portfolio. You see stocks are doing well. You see that Forex is doing well, but your commodities are not doing. OK, well, that's today's work. OK, well, then let's go to my download, my um, his trading history. What ones have I been making? What ones have I not been using? And you can assess which ones have been losing of your trades as well overall. But not, but not just that. You can actually name these um, spreadsheets you're making. This was with RSI and Bollinger Bands. This was with CCI and Parabolic. This was with uh, Bollinger Bands and, and KDJ. This was with this. This was with a 200 moving average. This, many different ways and you can grow which ones work for you because i speak to some traders who draw lines all over the place I, I speak to some traders who only work with moving averages i work with some who just like eyeballing it and not using indicators at all but it doesn't matter whatever you feel comfortable with it's up to you to develop this but you can use the the maths the cold hard maths that, that the data has the portfolio management tool which we've seen if we go back here you can see all across here that it says right i'm making 321 across all of my um, assets i'm doing quite well my profits my investment was that and i'm making 300 returns so i'm getting about eight grand back of, of a seven grand investment or seven and three quarters so that's that's not too bad but 
that's only my stocks, uh, my, my assets I know I'm doing well. It's not telling me about my strategies. So this is why you need to be diverse and using the trading history, naming it, um, this was with this as, uh, technical indicator, this was with uh, fundamental analysis, I tried this, I tried that. And you can, after a month or two or a year, you can actually correlate these results and, and have a look um, and see which ones are performing and which ones are not. Um, what other issues have we got today? So how would you do about doing fundamental analysis on binary options because of the technical and technical volatility? So, well, for binary and digital options, fundamental analysis can be a tricky thing to utilize because obviously it's quick options, quick returns. Um, if you're trading on a longer period, of course, it would be easier to do. You can use the NFP that was today. That was a good bit of volatility. Um, you can use earnings, um, as well to, to adapt these tradings. But for binary and digital, um, fundamental analysis, you need to be ahead of the curve. Like if you speak to or listen to any trader, um, yeah, if you speak to any trader, like a, a professional trader or something like that, or watch documentaries on it, I can tell you now it's a really good one to watch. It's called Trader with Paul Tudor Jones, incredible man. He, um, he basically used uh, data from and the 1920s to uh, predict a, a crash in the 1980s. This data was 60 years old. So fundamental analysis can be used. It's, it's not necessarily the period, it's how clever it's used. But for, for you guys um, with the platform, with the binary options, I would recommend um, planning your attack. If you know there's a meeting with um, the... ECB and Draghi making a speech about that, talking about the, the state of the euro, and he's expecting to make this. Do your homework. Research every single news channel you can find and see what they are saying. Get a collective um, source of information. I never listen to one opinion. I never listen to not even our platform. I, I go for every single thing. You've got to be well informed from every single thing. So if you study the night before and you have an opinion of right, I think uh, it's going to open at 1.27 and it's going to close at 1.5, then you have an opinion that it may short that market or something like that. So it's about getting in there early with the market um, and being there at the right time. Um, what else have we got here? Um, so also how to fight the emotional trading. My, my point around this whole topic today, I mean, I said about money management, um, there's many different ways of doing that, but the point of money management is to just being smart as well. There are obviously formulas you can use, like the, the, the compound trading, you can um, just use $1 trading all the time or just stick to 10 or have a percentage each time. There's, there's different ways you can do it, but my point was about being agile and adaptive. It's about, the risk adjusts returns. It's about keeping a portfolio of healthy, um, consistent returning um, profits. That's that's your, the nature of the beast. You need to be doing that. Um, once you get a grasp on this, once you're able to utilize that platform using the portfolio management tool, and you are, you know, you're you're getting rid of dead wood. You're cutting out the ones that are not good for you. You know, you might not be a wizard at Forex, but try stocks. They're steadier. They, um, they go up in a nice sort of gradient. They're very slow. They react to uh, CEO scandals. They react to um, appropriations from other companies or conglomerates like Google buying them and rises the market in enormous ways. Or even a Star Wars announcement can affect Disney. You know, all these different things are very easy to use. Um, Forex can sometimes be tough to do, but you stick with it and it's it's fine. They're just the same sort of stories as well. Um, but understanding where this volatility comes from, it should help you understand what risk you want to be exposed to. You know, the, the higher the volatility, the more risk a reward relationship you've got, but there's going to be a high level of re uh, risk with it. So you need to be adapted with it, okay? And very well said, Uche, actually, uh, you must remove greed. This is the point I made earlier about um, emotional trading, um, about you being a human being. You've got goals, you've got greed, you've got dreams, you are a human being. So again, I think uh, we need to let Uche do the training session here. He's doing well. You need to set your target, exactly. You need to know exactly what you want. I've got a 1,000, I want to turn this into 5,000, so I have... Um, 
I want to make uh, times five of this profit. So I need to work out how I do that by a year. OK, how long are you going to be trading for? What asset classes will you be using? Are you going to be using long positions, short positions? Are you going to be um, trading for, for a day or doing a swing trade thing? What, what, what kind of person are you? And once you're able to establish what kind of trader you are and being honest with yourself, you can start doing all these different assessments as well. Um, any other questions as well while I'm sort of helping out? Revenge trading as well. Very good topic. Trying to catch a fallen knife as well. Very, very good. Very, very good. Um, so uh, what else have we got here? Trading the perfect signal. Um, exactly as well. Having a trading plan helps. Um, so Obi David has said about having a trading plan helps. This is absolutely fundamental. You need to know what you you need you need a goal. Why am I in this investment? Why have I put fifty dollars that I worked really hard to get? Why am I putting this at stake? Because oh, I want to make this. I only want to be exposed to this much risk. So you need to understand why you're in the um, market, and um, you need to understand how volatile it is, and you need to understand how much how much uh, how much analysis and time you need to give it. Okay, right. So uh, the, the control the fear of losing. Well, this is what I said at the beginning. Um, let me go back up to that one there. How, Ganesh Bahali, um, welcome as well. We can control the fear of losing. It's a tough one because you need to embrace the fear of losing at the beginning. The money that you are investing, you have already. You need to already establish you've lost it. Okay, because once you think you will lose this money and you can afford to lose it, you can then trade it. Um, without you're expecting to lose it already so you can then play it trade it from a perspective of um defensive strategies as well um i'm going to mention as well um also about some of the different um ways of doing it but um one of the other methods of uh money management is a compound trading Okay, compound trading is a money management strategy um it's used in increment amounts of winning trades and say, for example, if you given a profit percentage of 90%, the 90% the coefficient will be about, uh, will change to 1.90. So 90% the coefficient will be changed to 1.90, okay? So you will only um, increment if your positions are in the money. And try not to increment over two to three successful trades. Once two to three compound trades are in the money, go back to your initial investment. So I'll say that again. If an asset is given a profit percentage of 90%, the coefficient will be changed to 1.90. Okay, so you will only increment if your positions are in the money. Try not increment in over two to three successful trades. But once that two to three compound trades are in the money, go back to your original investment. Okay. And right, we've got uh, Mohammed Mustafa. Depends on your skills. Well, yes, but you need to you need to understand how well you're doing. You can't just open up the platform. You can't just open up the platform, trade during the day, not look at it, not look over your results, not reflect on what happened, and then come into the next day expecting different results. No, this is why I'm showing you these tools here. You've got your portfolio management. Let's click here. Sorry. So you've got your portfolio management here. This is where you can see all of your stocks. This is where you can see all of your commodities, your binary options, whatever you are trading as a um, trader. And you can address which ones. If they're green, brilliant. That's what we want. You want to be in the green. But if they're red, this, is, this needs to be tended to. Um, and this is a very useful thing because this can tell you where you need work in or what ones are not really working well for you. If you have five consecutive weeks of profits inside one one particular asset or well, stick with it you know stick with that until you um can incorporate that strategy into another one um but another thing i'll mention as well is is don't don't stick to an asset because you like it i, I hear a lot of traders stick to things like apple because they understand it they know of it and sometimes they're going to let you down so you need to adjust and say 
um, goodbye to that asset kind of thing. It's it's very difficult to do so, but um, you need to be adaptive. Um, the best time for binary option trading. Um, Sakhlein Ali Rai, I would say it's difficult to say. It's very difficult to say. I mean, you can use um, a scalping technique. Uh, for example, you can make minor profits on major movements. This is used with fundamental analysis. So I would recommend um, on your platform, you should use the market analysis tab, which is located to the left. Um, look for the Forex and because you'll be using currency pairs and some of our stocks as well and find out what news is happening that day and then you know an hour before that trade or that bit of news is about to come out plan your attack and, and kind of wait there as well um okay mohu mohu scalping no it's not shaving your head unfortunately it's um shaving off risk you know it's it's scalping is essentially making minor profits on major movements slow steady small increments on big big events you know is donald trump being arrested is he being impeached is uh the china us trade war being agreed which it has now uh is the tensions in the middle east between iran saudi arabia and us of over oil is this affecting the oil all of these things um can create movement for you to make a minor profit get in get out shut shop that's it scalping um what other questions do we have here? Uh, I mean, the best indicators here, best indicators. Again, there is no best indicator. I mean, some of the indicators I quite like are moving averages because you can play around with the different frames, uh, time frames and the periods and the seconds of this. Um, but uh, Stochastic is very good as well. Uh, Uche's commented on uh, Shepo Falotzi's. He uses the Stochastic. I would recommend... The stochastic is very, very good, but so I would recommend using a KDJ indicator because it is a stochastic oscillator in low volatility. So you get two indicators for the price of one. If you're using a KDJ indicator at the same time as your Bollinger Bands and your Bollinger Bands are very flat and thin and are tightly hugging that trend, it becomes a stochastic because the KDJ is a stochastic oscillator with one extra line. But when the volatility is high, the J line, uh, the blue line, I think it is, it's light blue. This is a signal indicator in high volatility. So this actually tells you, um, gives you insight when to start looking at these signals. It's not click trade when this signal happens, but it, it merits further investigation. You need to be looking into these trades or these signals as well, because it can give you insight um, into, into your market. Okay, let's take some other questions as well. Um, my Firas price action RSI removed it. Okay, price action it can be used well, but like anything, you shouldn't just stick to one thing. You should try having a, a harmony of different different methods of trading. You should always use a different method of trading. Um, you need to be adaptive. This is the point of today's um, uh, webinar. I'm trying to teach about. Yes, there's money management. Yes, it's all about being smart with your money. But how would you be smart with your money? Well, it's about going through um, the risks involved, doing your, like I said before, you're, you're a pilot. You do pre-flight checks. You find out, is um, today's market worth flying in? Should I land a few trades in here? Should I um, refuel? Do I have enough fuel in my, in, in my um, gas tank? You know, do I have enough money in my balance to trade? I, all of these different things are good money management because then you can assess your risk as well. Um, let's have some more other questions as well. I'll help out here while I can. The Ichimoku cloud is very, very good. Uh, I quite like it. Um, it can take a while to get used to, but um, you know we have many different videos on the indicators uh, on the platform. Sorry, we've got many different ways you can utilize it. You can play around with the settings. Um, also, you can ask your support and your account managers as well, but uh, it's a very, very good way of looking at the market as well, okay? Um, right. So I'm going to take a few more of these questions here. The trend line, Suru, what do you mean about the trend line? Ask me again and I'll help you out here. 
best time to trade? Josh, there is not really one best time to trade. It is whenever you are there and there's a good bit of volatility. Volatility is made from the behavior of people like presidents or people in charge of inflation or people like Mario Draghi who gives speeches or CEOs of company. All of these things in the news that you read about, Facebook in trouble with selling personal data, uh, tensions in the Middle East with oil, these create volatility. That market you are trading on is dictated by buyers and sellers. So how are these buyers and sellers going to be affected by that news? You are yourself a buyer and seller. You are trading up and down, call or put, higher or lower. So you need to understand their behavior as well as yours. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, logical growth. Du, 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 du. What have we got? What have we got? Um, trading in Bitcoin as well. Good man, Jeffrey, on trading Bitcoin. It's definitely woken up again. Um, I would recommend looking into the G20 of last year in Argentina, Buenos Aires, because July was the task force's deadline to come up with regulations for all Bitcoin, uh, all cryptocurrencies. So this is one of those explanations of why you'll see um, volatility in the market at the moment. Um, it may still increase, but it's certainly um, dwindled recently. So keep your eyes on top of that. But uh, I'm going to bring my um, webinar to a bit of a close because it's kind of deviated from the original point. But I'll summarize um, what I meant and what I intend to do this. You need to establish that there, and, and it, you need to embrace that there is risk. First and foremost, you need to understand that. You also need to change your trading perspective and know that there is many risks that come with trading. If you want those opportunities, you are going to have to expose yourselves to those risks. Okay. You're going to have to expose yourselves to those risks, but that doesn't mean you have to like it. Okay. So let's just go over here. So using all these different tactics, using the fundamental analysis, using the technical indicators, using um, you know, your wits, using the support and resistance line, using different um, forms of analysis, different strategies, different time frames, uh, all of these different things can, can help you become better equipped at um, trading. Okay, because greed is a difficult thing to, 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 to cull, to stop. You're a human being, you want to make money, but you also shouldn't want to lose it. So do your self analysis financially, understand the risks involved. That will that will give you some form of discipline by giving yourself a set of rules. I only have this, I only want to lose this. So if I have a thousand euros, I don't want to lose 10% um, of this. So as soon as I'm in a position where I'm losing a hundred of my a thousand, this is when I start, I need to start attending to my trades in a portfolio. I need to spread the risk. It's too volatile in um, binary right now. I only like Euro USD. Um, I only like uh, GBP. Change it. Try something new. Use the demo account. Use um, you know the chat. Speak to people in the community. Get insight from other people. Speak to your account manager. Speak to support. Use the blog we have. All of these different things are there to help you um, educate yourself and to try different things. Um, if there are any more questions, you know you know where to ask. But uh, once again, I'd like to thank you all who attended today. Um, I hope this. It's been good for you. It's uh, kind of all over the shop with regards to what we've been talking about, but I wanted to make sure your questions are answered. Um, this will be recorded as well, so you'll be able to address it afterwards. But um, be vigilant, you know, embrace the risks, do your financial analysis on yourself, understand the risks involved, and discipline yourself, and you'll be on the right track. Thank you. Take care, guys.